shrimp people what's up today's video is all about shrimp death why do shrimp die what are the most common reasons what are the less common reasons that you find a dead shrimp in your tank or multiple dead shrimp so let's start at the very beginning parameters it's very very important that whatever species of shrimp that you're getting that you meet the required parameters for that species of shrimp Shrimp are not like fish in that they are more adaptable to different parameters and a lot of people apply their fish knowledge or their fish, hu fish husbandry to shrimp thinking that they will adjust or adapt that same way when really the, the secret to being able to do really really well with your shrimp is by giving them those parameters that they will really really thrive in and by going too far off that target parameters parameters which are GH, KH, TDS, and PH, by going too far off of the target range, you'll start to encounter problems, um, sickness, and or death. So I'm not going to go into the exact parameters per species of shrimp, but you really, really want to have a more select um, range than a lot of times what is offered on the on the internet as a very broad range that's suggested. Aside from parameters, you want to make sure that your tank is fully cycled. A cycled mature aquarium is a must for shrimp because if you have nitrites or ammonia, that means your cycle is not complete and that will kill shrimp. Also, if your nitrates are too high, that will also cause stress and kill shrimp. So also make sure that your tank is fully cycled. High temperatures. People are using heaters and you might want to ask yourself why would you use a heater? Because shrimp really really tend to prefer cool temperatures over hot. So unless your temperature in your home or in your shrimp room is below 65 degrees constantly and you want to just bring it up, you know, up to maybe the high 60s or 70, then I could see the need to use a heater. But if your temperatures are between 66 and 72 degrees, 74 degrees, there is absolutely no need for a heater. That being said, people maybe are using it to keep the, the temperature consistent all the time. So you don't want fluctuations and you're thinking that those fluctuations are stressing the shrimp out. They actually don't. Everyday temperature changes happen so gradually that they don't stress the shrimp out and it's almost more natural to have daily fluctuations in temperature than it is to have a thermostat set at 74 degrees day and night. So as someone who has kept shrimp for a very very long time I have never used a heater and I have never experienced a shrimp death from not using a heater. The opposite can be true. In the summertime a lot of people experience loss and that's because you know in the fall and the winter we're kind of um, experiencing temperatures that we either set ourselves with our thermostats around 70 or or slightly lower so those temps are actually favored by the shrimps and that's why we're not seeing deaths as soon as summer comes naturally a lot of people's homes gets a little bit hot um, above 74 degrees you're going to see deaths especially with carotene shrimp Neocaridina shrimp, no, not so much. They can tolerate higher temps, but with caridina shrimp especially, I cannot stress how much that high temperatures will affect them negatively, um, and especially in the summertime, that's when people really have to be kind of active in figuring out a way to cool their shrimp room. Um, Neocaridina, like I said, are more tolerant, but it's especially important for caridina shrimp. The other thing about um, heat being too high for your shrimp is that it also can spur on infections like bacterial infections and cause issues. So, I mean, naturally in their natural environment, shrimp are used to being in cool water. They are not tropical fish, they're not angelfish or discus where they need a heater on 24-7. In terms of heaters, it's, it's just not needed and I can't stress that enough, that's one of the most uh, biggest misconceptions about shrimp keeping is people feeling the need to use a heater. So 
I mean, like I said, if you're in some really cold area, by all means, you, you may have to use it if your temps are ridiculously cold in the winter or whatever. But otherwise, don't, don't bother, don't waste your time. And also, heaters can malfunction, so if, uh, if something goes wrong, it can cook your whole tank. Another thing is you really want to keep in mind the source of your shrimp. There are basically two places people get shrimp. They buy either from a pet store slash online shrimp retailer, or they buy from a hobbyist, somebody who is breeding shrimp their own, advertising on Facebook or Kijiji or whatever. So two places to buy the shrimp. Sometimes shrimp die because of stress, and this has to do with imported shrimp. Imported shrimp, um, especially Neocaridina, are bred overseas. They spent most of their life overseas in one body of water, one set of parameters, and they're big, beautiful adult-sized shrimp. They get shrimp shipped from overseas to your country. They put put in the fish store, the shrimp store, and then again, they're moved to your tank. So being moved two times as a full-grown adult shrimp can be stressful on them. This is very common to see high percentage of die-off on import neo caridina shrimp. The reason that caridina shrimp don't die off as much is because the exporters tend to send juvenile sized caridina shrimp and they tend to acclimate better. So I think in terms of neo caridina, the size and the age has a lot to do with their ability to transition and acclimate multiple times. So that is the stress of buying import shrimp. That's why they can sometimes die and it's nothing you've done wrong. A lot of people have the perfect setup, the perfect parameters and the shrimp are dying and they are dumbfounded and think it's something they did wrong when really it's just the source. Okay, home breeders. The upside to home breeders is that if you find a reliable home breeder who is known for nice shrimp and quality shrimp, great. It's always nice to go that route. The, the upside is that they know the parameters that the shrimp are kept in. And they can tell you that just to make sure that your parameters are close or similar to theirs. Um, also, the shrimp that home breeders, they're kind of like, if you're in the same town, you have the same type of water. So the parameters, again, are going to be closer than that of one across the world. Homebred shrimp are often sold as juveniles or young adults, and they are not being shipped multiple times prior to landing in your tank. They're just going from that hobbyist, hobbyist tank to your tank. And then, um, so that's just a lot less stress in itself. And in terms of that, I mean, the only downside to homebred shrimp really is, I mean, if you're buying from somebody who's inexperienced and keeping them in totally wrong parameters, like somebody who's keeping neocaridina shrimp in super soft water, it's not recommended. It, some people do that. And then so if you bring home shrimp that were in really soft water and put them in a hard water tank because you're trying to generally accommodate neocaridina shrimp, you know, that difference is going to cause problems. Um, when it comes to population, as your shrimp colony grows, sometimes an imbalance in sexes can cause a problem. So, I've personally experienced and I've read stories about people who have too many males in their tanks. When the females molt and are ready to breed, the males do this dance and kind of frenzy around the whole tank looking for that female and sometimes when there's too many males they can attack females so overwhelm females a whole bunch of males at once and stress them out and kill them so this is something to keep in mind when you have a really large colony you notice that your female shrimp are turning up dead or that the dead shrimp are all female that's something to consider take a look at your male population and kind of go from there Pests are a problem. Pests like planaria, hydra, scuds, dragonfly, nymphs, these are all little creatures and pests that can kill shrimp, and especially baby shrimp. Now, I have personally seen scuds kill baby shrimp, like tiny little shrimplets, 
Planaria and Hydra will definitely kill baby shrimp especially. And dragonfly nymph is something that comes in on some plants that are cultured out outdoors. And it's just, um, they will attack shrimp as well in the aquarium. So if you see any of these pests, you really need to eradicate them. There are ways to get rid of them all. Planaria and Hydra, there's a product called um, No Planaria. It's a great product. I dose at half the recommended dosage and it works for me. Dragonfly nymphs, you just remove them. And scuds, oh wow, scuds are hard to get rid of. So as you see them, pull them out. If you have one scud in your shrimp tank, do not think he's harmless. There's probably another one in there. And then before you know it, there's going to be a hundred in there. So the first sight of a scud, you need to take him out of the tank. Chemicals, toxins. There are certain chemicals and toxins that are harmful to shrimp. Namely, there are a few I'm going to go into right now really quickly. Number one is certain chemicals on plants that you buy in a pet store. You put it in your tank and your shrimp are dropping dead like flies. There are chemicals on some of these plants that can really, really do, a, just wipe out your whole tank and do a really, really um, harmful stuff to your shrimp. So I personally don't buy pet store plants. I'm not trying to say it's bad. I just worry because I have a lot of shrimp. So one way to kind of make sure if you're buying plants and you're not sure is if you have a bucket or a tank with some cherry shrimp in it that you don't care about. Like not, not that you don't care about, but that it's okay to experiment with. Put it in there. If the shrimp are fine for a couple of days, then you know it's fine. These plants that have the toxins on them will kill shrimp very quickly. So you'll know pretty fast if something's wrong. Okay, so a lot of people have cats and dogs and we treat our cats and dogs for fleas in the spring and summer. So you know that little topical solution that you put on your dog? That is highly, highly um, toxic to shrimp. So if you put that on your dog, you pet your dog and you put your hand in your tank, there's a good chance you are going to annihilate your tank. Also, flea shampoos will say the same thing on the back, that it, they, it's lethal to invertebrates. So you just want to be really careful with certain things that you're touching and then putting your hands in your tank. For me, I'm a dog owner. Uh, I let my dogs outside for a lot of long periods of time during the summer and they sometimes get fleas. So I make sure that when I'm about to treat them, that I am, I don't really stick my hands on the tank for a good while after I treat them because I just don't want to risk, um, you know, my shrimp dying. And now the last thing that I'm going to talk about is babies dying, which isn't as noticeable, but if you know you had like five buried females and you only see 10 baby shrimp a month, two months later, then you know that the baby survival was low. So babies die because there's first, not enough food sources for them. Second, if parameters are off, yes, they will die. They won't do well. So make sure your parameters are, like I said, on target for the species of shrimp that you're keeping and that for food, you're creating biofilm for them in the shrimp tank in a lot of different ways, including leaf litter, um, keeping mosses, sponge filter, as well as using a, um, powdered food as a supplementary way. I find that after I started using powdered foods, my baby shrimp survival rate went up super high. So I use it all the time. As my colony grows, as there's more and more babies, I use more and more of it. As when the colony's smaller, I just use a little pinch every day when I know there's babies in there, but there's not that many. So, and doing it that way, I found that it really helps cut down on the babies dying. All right, guys, I think that's it. I hope I didn't go on too long. This might be one of my longest videos ever, but it's an important one, and I think I covered everything. If you have any suggestions on things that maybe I missed or, you know, any stories of your own, please feel free to comment below. Thank you so much for watching.